No, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Absolutely wonderful to be here. Jan Kilimanjaro is in Chennai. About 15, literally 30 kilometers away. But I grew up in Thrissur, though. So most of the time, most of my life. Uh, I'm su actually it's surprising. I never visited uh, Trivandrum for uh, for an event like this. So you know, it's just uh, amazing. And Dipu, your um, belief in youngsters and energy is just, uh, you know, absolutely inspiring. Huh? Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, it just, uh, that's the future of India. So I think that's the future of the world in one sense because we lead the world. So, you know, again, thank you for hosting and, you know, I know many of you uh, went out of your way. Uh, I saw many of those messages on LinkedIn and so on uh, promoting. Uh, the event itself. But I think there is something larger brewing in the world. And the large, the, that movement traditionally has been driven by the global north. You know, the, much of the developing nations driving the digitization and we have been a services industry to them. Right? We, that's what we did uh, from 90s. And uh, you know, IT Technology Park, I didn't realize, this is actually one of the oldest in the country. In 90, Four ninety-five, yeah, yeah, it's really old. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know. But I, I knew some of my friends had come over from Infosys at that time when they shifted. But, uh, but much of that actually has been to provide IT services and IT and outsourcing, BPO and other services to the world. But really, if you look at the the next generation, where the intellectual property creation started with the product movement right that happened uh, much of that is late you know we are in the second generation at best of the product industry or including SaaS and everything else but i think there is something even more interesting happening i think the ability to digitize and ability to digitize at scale at a billion people scale has never been demonstrated done before and India's that movement has actually created significant ripple in the global south. So what's going to happen is in the next decade. Next decade is not a decade of Europe. Europe is really behind. And if you travel there, you'll realize there's no energy, there's no hope. As a real, I think what you see here is that even middle of all the chaos that we live in, right? I mean, India is notoriously known for its, you know, its high entropy environments that we live in. Everything is fuzzy, n no rules are broken. Bangalore, everybody drives completely opposite direction, wherever, whatever you want to do, right? Nobody cares. Even in there, people have hope. People believe tomorrow is going to be a better day. And that is come from the last decade, dec two decades of our India's transformation, right? And this transformation is actually rubbing off into the rest of the world. I speak about 40 countries right now uh, in terms of them wanting to do it. And today we have a target of 50 countries to go DPI, DPI 50 in five. That's what we called it, 50 countries in five years to be able to allow the DPIs to go into 50 countries. But I think our ability to do that will also come from India. India will be in cutting edge in helping Global South because our ability to actually offer uh, in affordable, rapid, high quality manner would depend on that. And so it's not just India. India is yet, um, India is still going to go through another 10 years of massive development, maybe 20 years of development before we can call ourselves reasonably okay. Trust me, we have a long way to go. But I think we have set ourselves up extremely well. And the only hope that all of us are perpetually optimistic about is the youngsters in this room. Okay, you are the only way we are going to survive this chaotic, high confusion future that we don't know what's yet to brew, right? Especially with sustainability, climate, the lot of questions even for Kerala for that matter, right? Sea is rising, we don't know how much of land is going to disappear in the next 50, 
75 years. So countries are really reimagining the possibility of an economic, sustainable economic uh, development plan. It's no more unsustainable economic development plan. And India will lead that world. India will absolutely show the world how it can be done. No question about it. And you will be part of that. And that's what will actually allow Global South to also come. Because after the India wave, the next will be Africa rising up. A billion people there rising up to actually support the, support the rest of the world. Okay. Okay. So I, I'll take about 20, 25 minutes, like a, maybe like a little bit of a TED style. I'll go fast because I think I want to open up some questions. I want to discuss with you rather than me. So I'm hoping that I can go fast about what the transformation and many people have not seen this transformation at a macro level. That means you have seen, okay, how many of you have Aadhaar? Of course, everybody. I know very few people, <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't think you had a choice either, right? <laughs> so anyway, how many of you use UPI? How many of you don't use UPI? That's a good question. Maybe I should look at older people. You know, who are, everybody use UPI? Kerala is still a uh, little bit heavy. Huh? I do notice when I travel here that it is still Unlike Bangalore, Bangalore you can live for like months with no purse, nothing, you just on phone. I think maybe, probably everything digital here as well, right? Now everybody accepts, yeah, or China. Okay, fantastic. How many of you are using DigiLocker? Not many, right? Oh, oh, some of you, many of you, okay, that's good. DigiYatra, of course, that started using recently, it's been a pretty convenient thing. And you know, I know Avira is here. Uh, who's going to talk to me after this? Yeah, he's been all part of the early DigiLocker, pre DigiLocker uh, world where much of what DigiLocker was trying to do, he was trying to do in, like an entrepreneur himself uh, and scaling it up. So, here is a 20, 2007 picture. In 2007, and this is not Kerala, rest of most of India, we had 17 percentage of the people who had bank account access. 2000 by 9 when we started Aadhaar, Aadhaar started in 2009, that's when uh, you know some of us quit and volunteered for it and we had less than 20 percentage of people who had bank account and interestingly the study actually the, some of the study shows that we have been actually trying to give bank account to people, it's not that we were not trying but post 9-11, 9-11 was uh, you know, ch changed the world right, in terms of what does the security uh, in airport, security, uh, money laundering, terrorism funding, all those questions started coming and that's why they started tightening the noose. 9-11 really tightened the noose in banking sector or financial sector in general, saying that you will need a lot of documents to prove who you are, where you live, KYC, know your customer blah, 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 before you can actually get a bank account. And to get a mutual fund account, even it was even more. Interestingly, bank account would have costed about 600 rupees to a banker to open a bank account, about you know, 500, 600 rupees to do a KYC. In mutual fund, it would have taken 1,500 rupees to, to open a mutual fund account to do KYC cost. This is the KYC cost I'm talking, okay? Basically, just getting paperwork done. What does it mean? The more paperwork you ask, the harder it will make it, the less people get in. So it is a direct correlation of that when you tighten the policies and create more friction in the system, less people can actually access. So what do people do? People live outside the formal system. Much of India lives in the informal sector. You know it, right? Banking, we have fixed the fixed somewhat fixed it, but if you really look at it, grey collar jobs. I know some of you are doing jobs and uh, you know uh, skilling and jobs, uh, grey collar, blue collar jobs are horribly fragmented and informal. They are not formal at all. Investments. Kerala led much of the informal investments, right? You know we had mututs of the world. You know pre the formalization. Uh, we're all actually doing investments outside the SEBI norms in one sense because the formal system was, it was hard to get into the formal system. Only few people could get in. 
So, you had all this investment, you know, sort of side businesses that happened, right? Now, this is a big issue, but at the same time, 2009, very, very interestingly, India is a socialistic nation, continued to be socialistic, and I don't have to talk to Kerala about it. Kerala is even more left. So, in thinking, I'm talking about it, forget the political uh, role. Our way of thinking is a lot more left leaning, okay, in one sense that we want to support poor people, farmers, you know, we, we care. We, the, as a society, we talk about it, we care about it, we are constantly uh, debating about it and so on. And government used to spend, at that time, in 2009, when Aadhaar was announced, we used to spend about 50 billion US dollars then. 50 billion, now it's about 80 billion dollars direct to giving benefits to people. So remember, government, that was about 2.5 percentage of the GDP at that time. Roughly about 18 percent of the budget was going into giving people money. And almost all of us had, right, our parents at least had cooking gas subsidy and everybody will know, all the middle class will know, cooking gas subsidy, pensions, scholarships, Janani uh, Surichayo Jinal for pregnant women or fertilizer subsidy, uh, food security, PDS, the ration shops, at that time it used to be called ration because people who in the 70s know it used to be rationed. Now it's no more rationed, it's called fair price shop, but all these are subsidies. Now remember, how did government give subsidies to people who had no identity or bank account? It's like giving salaries to your employees who you don't know who they are. Or oh, you can't give it in the bank account. So it's like throwing money and that's exactly what used to happen. Roughly about 40 to 50 percentage of this money used to be pocketed by middlemen or leaked out in the system. That's huge, it's just $25 billion every year somebody is stealing away. So it is a big problem for India, right? And that, and this is a study from 2020. Fast forward 10 years, that was 2010 picture, this is 2020 picture. This is a study from Bureau of International Settlements, BIS, which is a central bank of central bank in Basel, in, you know, and they studied this India's financial movement, financial banking sector movement, and they said something incredible happened in India, and they wanted to study. And they said India would have taken five decades to give 80 percentage of the bank account, that's what it is. To get to 80 percentage of adults having bank account, we would have taken five decades. That means in 2060, when some of us are dead and gone, India will be still opening bank accounts to people. That's what it means, right? Stupid. It makes no sense. By then, I don't know whether AI will rule the world. God knows what's going to happen. How can we not have bank accounts, right? It makes no sense to us. Because that was a cost system to open a to go bank branches, open bank accounts, incentivize them, create habits, all that thing. India did this in flat seven and a half years. It's unbelievable, right? India did com compress the five decades of development cycle into less than a decade, and during the same decade. Everyone got an identity, digital identity. So Aadhaar was the fastest to get to a billion people, even faster than Facebook or WhatsApp, by the way. It's very, very interesting. We started in 2010, first two years, we took one year to get to 200, one year, one million other holders. And by within one year, 270 days later, we were doing one million Aadhaar every day in the system. And in five and a half years, we get to, you know, six and a half years, we go to a billion people. And then now 1.39 billion people. But that's not the important part. It's not about issuing identity. Remember, what is a real understanding of DPI, DPI came out of this, is that the DPI is useful when someone else builds innovation on top of the DPI. Because issuing ID card is one thing. But if ID card is, is an ID card and, and people used to think, and my father was, uh, mother was disappointed to see that other print out, okay, by the way. It's a really ho horrible photo. I said, hmm, yeah, I know, horrible print out. I wish we had a better card. I said, you know what, this is digital ID. <laughs> what do I do? You know, you know, 
No, because everybody was expecting a card, beautiful looking card, hologram and all that stuff, right? Good stuff. And we said, we don't need any of that because of the digital ID. You are the identity. That's just a proxy. The paper is just a proxy. You are the identity, right? You are who you are. So your ability to prove ID anywhere, in time, digitally, because we built it for the new next generation. But we also gave printout because, you know, printouts are useful. We still keep, take photocopies, do random stuff with it. So it's okay. So one of those habits that don't go away that easily, right? While we did that, what was, what were we watching? We were watching everyday use of Aadhaar. Not how many people got issued. Of course, everybody, we knew, we had to track issuance. Usage was actually the metrics we had. And that was a brilliant way to say, unlike, unless you drive demand side use cases, issuing ID is useless. What do they do with the ID? What does it unlock for a billion people? What value does it unlock for a billion people? And that's where we were going after bank account opening and benefits transfer as the two killer use cases, if you were to call that, right? Killer use cases. And of course, we chose pension as the first one and subsequently cooking gas, LPG uh, scheme as the second big use case, national use case. And then now we have about 1,000 programs on top of it. Even today, Aadhaar is used by about 70 to 80 million times every day. Even today, you will have 70 million people using it in the country. Digitally authenticating. Now, we don't know if you use it offline, by the way. UIDA does not know whether you use it offline. You can use your offline card to go through airport or you can use offline like Digi Yatra, right? You can use an offline authentication like QR code. You can scan a QR code and so on. We won't know. We are talking about 70 million online usage every day. Why? Because there are many people who don't have phone. Actually, they use assisted models to get services. And this is also the reason why we did EKYC. So Aadhaar is one of the most brilliantly simple. Uh, people ask me, was it a difficult project? Technologically, it was difficult. Of course, it is yeah, a little bit difficulty. But it's one of the most simplest projects, identity projects in the world, period. I've seen many ID systems. By the way, Brazil started along with us. Mexico started along with us. Many countries started along with us. They still haven't finished the project. Much smaller countries. Brazil has 220 million people. Mexico is even smaller. They still haven't completed. Why? Because people complicate their life. And India managed to keep other damn simple. Four attributes, two APIs, that's it. Just do that well. 60 million times every day. Nothing more, right? And that simplicity was the essence of also DPI thinking. That means when you build infrastructure pieces, digital public infrastructure, we as builders of DPI must keep that extremely simple and generic enough so that entrepreneurs who are on building on top of that can build the rest of the features so that government don't have to build all the features. It makes no sense. And people still ask me, why didn't you put blood group? I wish you put blood group into other because if I get into an accident on the roadside, at least somebody would argue with me. I said, yeah, where do you stop? I could have put blood group, I could have put your you know, father's name, I could have put your education qualification, I could have put your, you know, whether you have a pakka house or a kacha house or whether you could have, you know, religion, caste, big push for that time, by the way, to include caste because caste census was going on in 2009, if you remember. We avoided all that. And that brilliant simplicity was the reason we also survived a privacy debate, frankly speaking. Second longest Supreme Court case uh, in the history of independent India. Aadhaar case. But we came out quite successfully because we had nothing. It had four attributes and two APIs and we don't even know whether you are, we don't know location of Aadhaar usage. We don't even know the purpose of Aadhaar usage. Because when you open a bank account or when you go to a hotel check-in, UIDA system does not know where and why you used Aadhaar. And then whatever usage telemetry, telemetry, usage audit is actually deleted permanently in six months. So the system is, oh no, so simple, that's, what is it? You have more stuff, you put it on Facebook, yeah? I don't need this data from Aadhaar. And if you want your data, it's easier to just scan your 
social profile you will have you know amma appa everybody you know on your facebook everybody on the facebook profile right you are more stuff than other on the facebook so it's very very important to understand the simplicity and that's what also the reason why india built this india built world's largest money transfer rail dpi in india moving money today yesterday i was with a few investors from us and we were saying that telling them in money movement cost 1/700th of a dollar and their jaws dropped they said what the hell do you guys do because is it moving money from a store one store to another store shouldn't it just bounce if you can watch youtube on 4g today i mean damn cheap why would money the notion of money but what is actually being moved is just bytes so balance is yours right it's not somebody else so whether it's 1000 rupee balance or 10000 rupees for computer it makes no difference by the way but we used to have this habit of taking a cut out of it because financial sector western financial sector showed that you can actually take toll out of every money movement right <laughs> so we were in that habit and we didn't want that habit so we cut that habit right that's what happened with payment so we made this and 1300 programs today send money directly to people today in india so this is what happened when covid hit instantly we moved 160 million people got 4.5 billion dollars in their bank account unlike in the us where they were writing checks the first term of trump at that time they were writing checks people and posting it physically because they were, they didn't know who they are supposed to give it my friends lot of them got it why you know what our friends there are rich okay they shouldn't be getting the damn government subsidy you know but they were getting it because they didn't know who they should be sending this money to this was just kept sending it to everybody and india of course also moved our uh, this is 4g geo effect right and geo why is geo is important because geo was the, we were telling the telecom operators and try of course allowed it as a regulator but telecom operator like airtel at that time and vodafone please use ekyc and instantly issue a sim why are you collecting a big form at that time we used to have something called customer acquisition form caf and they would collect the caf two copies and then one guy will collect this paper take it to the headquarters verify they have to keep it for 7 years all that paper remember the cost and we said why don't you just uk wise we are opening bank account why don't you open sim card there's ah uh, we'll do it and okay maybe one day we'll do incumbency remember in existing incumbents don't change you are making you are telling me in the morning that nobody wants to change yeah nobody wants to change change is resisted other than young people okay i can tell you older people bad idea okay we don't change anything and uh, incumbent large institutions don't change so you always have to look for younger newer institution to change and that's what happened when jio came in less than 6 months they acquired 100 million customers completely paperless presence less they were issuing sim card in mumbai railway stations literally do an aadhar auth instant sim card right and that changed everything else and that's what what we call geo effect collapse of price indians went from 1 gb per capita usage a month to 1 gb a day you will wonder no what indians are doing on the internet 800 million people like yesterday's report says 800 million people are on the internet and doing 1 gb a day more than 1 gb a day consuming what do you think they are doing youtube maybe yeah <laughs> Yeah, maybe YouTube short. We banned TikTok, so we have no other, nowhere else to go. So probably they are watching YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> nevertheless, it's a great thing. DigiLocker, and that's where people like Avira and all was ahead of the curve. Was about credentializing. Why credentialize? Directly, cost, cost of paper, cost of paper is so high in the society. that it's it's not even known that means when people apply for a job the cost of verification if you are if you are, if you claim you are an engineer there's no freaking way i can verify where you are engineer other than sending some agency to run to your university dig up some old certificates and so on right everything is fakeable the quest because everything is fakeable no one trust anything and the cost of trust is a horrible burden 
on the society and especially for blue collar gray collar workers what is digilocker's original vision was when i actually wrote that in 2014 september i still have the original document vision document and we, we wrote this we should not have any certificate in this country that's not verifiable it makes no sense to issue paper certificates i hope you will do credentialized certificate as well <laughs> you know digital university and so on every certificate every one every individual should be able to prove prove their work it's called proof of work proof of skill proof of earning proof of your history proof of your uh, other capabilities right your ability to prove that is essential for your movement upward movement in your life everything is very very key and the fact that you have to prove only through paper and nobody trusts it it's a very very bad set for us especially when you have bulk of our industry is gray collar blue collar jobs okay white collar jobs are still and then upi upi started in 2013 2013 three of us sat in a room and imagined upi and then we said okay we won't do anything about it for a month, year and we kept thinking about it and 2014 we started actually we said okay we should do it 2014 and then 2014 we started writing down the protocol and the output was that about one and a half page document that's it upi was one and a half that's what origin of upi if you want to know one and a half page document reimagining what a payment could be any to any payment could be and then we launched pilot in 2015 16 we actually launched it and last month we did 12.5 billion transactions that is same volume as mastercard worldwide by the way and we we were by far we are the largest digital payments but the real value is not that again watch out for our inclusive development we cannot have El that what's called india one doing everything and the rest of india not doing anything at all right so we watch out those numbers what are those numbers with jandhan and bank account gender parity women had least identity documents again kerala is different kerala was always slightly ahead in terms of education and so on so you, but if you look at bulk of india women had no identity cards city why because property is in the husband's name electricity or whatever utility bills are in the husband's name mobile phone connection is in the husband's name and bank account is in the husband's name so you're pretty much screwed right if you are a woman and what does it mean no access it's to systems so identity solved that jandhan by the way now gender parity in bank account is absolutely equal women and men all across the country it's equal that means we have 72 percentage at at pa bank account same thing with mobile connection yesterday mobile connection rural has actually taken more gone more than urban smartphone connection and half is actually women this is very very good to see that means roughly same percentage of women men but smartphone access is still limited smartphone access is limited by men mostly by the way remember that okay so when we started this we were 2015 when we 2016 when we launched we realized though that smartphone based payment but did you know upi is not just smartphone upi was device agnostic currency agnostic channel agnostic authentication agnostic it was abstracted really well it was abstracted so well that i'm super proud of what we ended up doing including creation of first world's first uh, what's called virtual payment addresses right Re we in you know, a fungible uh, uh, recipient addresses we created like email we imagined all those possibilities very ahead of time and we did that and but today we have last month we also did 300 million transaction on upi by people who have no phones so people can go into a touch point put their fingerprint and actually transfer money using upi 300 million transactions so what happened is before 2016 we had less than 50 million 5 crore less than 50 million people doing digital payments in 2023 when we ended we have 500 million people doing digital payments that's an inclusive growth right inclusive growth is about not the same 50 million people doing more it's about 
expanding that pie and what does it mean? That means more people are now coming into the formal sector, formalization of the society and that formalization means whatever you and I have access, everybody should have access, right? That's very, very key, access. Now, whether they'll do well or not, we don't know, okay? But given access is very, very key. And the same thing we also did with businesses and we have Vijay and all, you know, uh, who helped, helped us architect, yeah, he's here. Uh, he was principal architect Radhar. He also helped us build GST. When we architected GST system, we rewrote the whole tax system. It was horrendous in the first time when we launched, right? It was difficult to do. But the best part about GST is not that you have to pay taxes. Of course, if you have to pay taxes. Taxes and death, you can't avoid. Even after death, they'll come after you for taxes. But nothing you can do. But it's not that point. In India, is the only country, again, develop one of the developing nations where all the invoices became E and all the E-way bills, transportation, right? When they move, transport, E-way bill became E. What does it mean? It's not PDFs. They are machine readable. For people who know that, machine readable documents with digital signature. That changes the game. Why does it change the game? Suddenly, a small businessman on the roadside or a small shopkeeper can verifiably prove that their cash flow is so and so, they have so much revenue, they have so many invoices, they make bill payments, they have UPI collection, everything is digitally provable. When an individual or an SME's footprints become digital and verifiable, suddenly they can use that data as an asset to actually create the flywheel effect. And that's the biggest change the world is watching, India going through. And that's why we are doing this. Account aggregator, if you don't know, completely open API-based system that allows you, individuals and SMEs, to harness all your financial data, tax data, bill payment data, UPI data, investment data, insurance data, uh, PF data, all that thing, right? They're joining, there are many information providers are joining the system and you can actually use API to access it. But even cooler than that, that's a picture of an ecosystem, private ecosystem. Thousand companies building innovations on top of those APIs, like UPI APIs. These APIs are actually available to you to reimagine how you could use information flow as an asset to write something, like, do something like this. Now, lending is a, one of the big killer applications. No question about it. Lending is the killer application for SMEs. Because why? We don't give le uh, loans to people. Uh, you might get it, okay? So, if you are getting it, you are good. You are elite. Large companies get loans. Small shopkeepers find it extremely hard. So, they go to money lenders. Why is it? Because cost of lending, cost of trust, cost of underwriting, is much more than I can actually what collect back at through interest. So if the SME or shopkeeper go and says, I need 50,000 rupees for two week loan. Two week, how much interest can you charge? Annual interest is 18%, even if it is 14, 16%, half level of person. Banks can't go that large, but at least MFIs can go. And if you, even if they do 18% days, two week, how much interest can you collect? But the cost of underwriting, Cost of verifying, cost of making sure you're collecting, cost of collection is so much higher, so I'd rather say no. So it's easier to get 10,000 crore from a bank account and run away or whatever you want to do, okay, to, to London. But other, otherwise, impossible. You ask for 10,000 rupees, they'll say, what the hell are you asking? I can't give you. It makes no sense. First time, India cracked that puzzle in the world. Why? It is not because we are reimagining. Because you guys, fintechs, like Open Fin and all the guys are Open Fin, all are uh, Kerala boys, right? Yeah, yeah. People are reimagining. People are reimagining the combinatorial power of these APIs. People are saying, I can use Aadhaar or PAN APIs. GST has APIs. I can use account aggregator for the data APIs. I can use DigiLocker APIs. I can use eSign API to paperless contracts. I can sign under the IT Act. I can use UPI to do e-mandate e in the UPI to collect back everything digital. That means 
first time in the history of India, we are able to actually underwrite loans, small sachet loans in minutes algorithmically. And that is huge for us, huge. It opens up access to capital to many, many, many small businesses. And that's brilliant way to push entrepreneurship and starting point, right? But only, otherwise, only the big corporations can get it. And it's very, very difficult. And then we, of course, did, you know, health. Everybody knows we talked about it. And that was all, by the way, some of these are using Sunbird uh, components. Sunbird components are used in and built in Divoc. Divoc was an open source project which we, we built before we, we realized we need a system in India to vaccinate a billion people. Otherwise, it will be so bloody chaotic. We would have injected the same guy 10 times and we would have injected, not injected like 10 other people, not even knowing who the hell injected, right? And that's bad because India, we couldn't have opened up the economy because we are a services economy. We have to bring people back to the jobs. Otherwise, it's very hard. So we, six months ago, before the vaccine drive started, we, Nandan had written up an editorial and then we started an open source project, which took about four weeks or so to build the initial part of COVID. And that's what happened. And then we launched it. And then, of course, Diksha is another effort, Sunbird effort that we did for schooling education. And again, we did not know COVID was coming. Nobody predicted COVID was coming. Thank God we built, invested in the in DPIs. Because India invested in this DPI, when crisis hit, we were a lot more resilient than other countries, right? We managed, because we managed to go online. Schooling continued. Schooling, one of the just went through the roof. I know Matthew, uh, Railu, and Madhu and all here probably had sleepless nights during that time because we were hitting 20,000 TPS, transaction per second, 25,000. Huge hit because the entire country woke up to say, thank God we have Diksha to actually use some, some classroom. Plus Diksha plus Zoom or whatever, Google Meet and all that thing for classrooms, right? We did. And today it's, it's enormously successful system. And that is what is setting ourselves up for. I won't spend much time because I know we are going to spend some time in the afternoon. Nitin is here, I think. ONDC, yeah, ONDC. So I just give you a glimpse because this is what Mu Learn kids and you know I was telling them these, these guys are just unbelievably ahead. Okay, we can only imagine some possibilities. Suppose somebody has to really jump in the pool and swim, and all of you are doing it. Thank you for doing it. It's really our economies are fragmented. All. Amazon has penetrated eight percentage of B two C. Remember, e commerce is 8 percentage, 92 percentage of our B2C commerce happens on the roadside. Not E, remember, that's the biggest one. Uber, nationally we do less transaction than Delhi Metro alone. Delhi Metro every day does more transaction than Uber nationally. Our volumes are crazy. India is so large and we can't leave the economies in fragmented. Fragmentation means inefficiency asymmetry cost remember and all that translate to people's high friction can't find a job how do you find an internship even we can't find an internship for our children why there's no clean way to find somebody wants it we have kids but impossible to find because it's all fragmented Sometimes we Google, sometimes we go to LinkedIn and post, sometimes we tell our friends, hey, I'm my son, you know, nephew is looking for an internship, can you find some place, right? It's just tough. It's very fragmented environment. And that is because we have our mental model. Our mental model so far has been driven by what happened in the West. What's called an aggregation model. Swiggy, Zomato, Uber, Amazon, Airbnb, Take any of these two-sided marketplaces, they or LinkedIn. You know, you bring providers on one side and provide consumers on the other side, and throw a lot of money and ads, and hopefully you'll survive, right? That's and Amazon has done a brilliant job. No question about it. We love them. No question about it. But they don't penetrate. They don't go beyond a particular scale. And that aggregation model leaves a market like us extremely fragmented. Or, on the other hand, if one of them happen to be really, really, really successful, we have a monopoly in hand. Either way, we are screwed. 
okay because either you will get a massive tech company who's taken over your country another way of digital colonization <laughs> okay we just went through 300 years i don't think we want to go through again but or we will have fragmented and what we really see is fragmentation did you know before upi people are used to ask don't you have cards because people who ask us are people from the in per capita number of cards in the us are three cards per person they have 900 million cards roughly about 320 people million people in the us we had 22 million cards 1 billion adults so we we basically what happened to india was we just didn't have it nobody had access to it so it's a for us it's a, it's a problem is not is that we have an alternate we have no alternate we have just left this informal economy somehow to survive right very painfully to survive that that's what we are trying to change and that requires a non platform imagination that imagination requires as audacious or big as internet like thinking internet is not one platform internet is not one big server internet is driven completely decentralized driven by protocols and standards and we are saying that instead of the siloed platforms that everybody has to be there whatsapp is the only platform i think that spanned got at least 2 billion people to be on platform right 2 3 billion maybe i don't know what whatsapp usage is we are moving towards that model we have been inspired and by internet to reimagine not the con internet opened up content economy and we want to open up transaction economy in the same decentralized way india is making absolutely audacious attempted at it and indians not even indian government open source community many of you are part of open source community if you didn't realize by the way many of you are part of that backing community driving this worldwide and first one was actually in kochi you should upload yourself go ahead upload yeah, yeah. kochi was i think uh, we had uh, um, our current energy uh, secretary jyotilal yeah jyotilal was transport secretary at that time yeah he he was actually he said yeah this makes sense how do we create dry uh, this what do you call intermediary less how do you disintermediate large tech companies and create peer to peer transaction and kochi was absolutely bold enough to put up their hand and say we'll experiment world's first permissionless peer to peer mobility network in kochi by the way which is crazy right how ahead you guys were in terms of thinking but it it doesn't happen overnight that was a great starting point that created the next conversation in bangalore and then created in delhi and then then that's you get that's how you get the domino effect you trip one domino on the next one and the, then the whole series of dominoes get fair right this now we have gone namayatri hyderabad kolkata chennai we are soon in paris amsterdam other places by the way in europe many places and this one in bangalore it's called namayatri superbly successful in one year they did actually 30 million plus trips 135000 drivers 1.3 lakhs drivers and 55 million earned by the driver directly with no intermediary imagine permissionless on back end protocol right it's just brilliant way to reimagine transaction economy why we could not have done 10 years ago we can do this today because everyone holds a computer in their hand and that's game changing everyone holds a computer powerful computer in their hand connected so you don't need this big you can now almost like uh, like the way you used to hail the auto outside or hail the taxi you can digitally hail peer to peer and that's what we were imagining should be possible and we made that happen right it's actually proving the world that's possible then started on ndc we have a talk on ndc so i won't spend much time but the, i wanted to show you though ondc is kicking in country wide but this is important again a thousand plus startups thousand plus startups being invested so imagine when internet came people said what's internet yeah some stupid looking web page in 95 by the way very clearly in newsroom and all people say ah, yeah some i can find some document it we really couldn't imagine people can't imagine what the future is it's hard to imagine what the future is going to be right 
if you imagine we would have been gods you know we actually know the what future it's tough that's why people miss it people miss the programmability of internet created all kinds of innovation gold rush in one sense internet and then the programmability this in, in this backend layer or the open network layer is going to create the next set of startups that's what's happening thousand plus startup actually doing it and this is across domain by the way hospitality kerala you guys should be creating the world's first open hospitality network somebody should stand up and actually do it because what's the probably is this one of the god's own country right we must do it right there is no question about it so we should do it and hospitality is a pet project for me because I, i one of the things i always wonder is why indians we get whole of india we get less visitors than a tiny island called phuket phuket gets more people visitors global visitors than whole of india gets with 5000 years of freaking history we can't invite get people to invite come here because it's fragmented everything is fragmented experience we need to package it really well organize it really well train people really well and we are very good at services industry so i think there is a possibility of completely reimagining hospital without the airbnb in the middle but with many of them right so that's a very powerful thing and we are also doing by the way if you think this is only for commerce and products and services no bangalore four startups that is sheru turno pulse and kazam the four energy startup green energy startups came together looked at beckon and said i can do energy trade real time energy bidding and trading and battery aggregation because we are going to be flooded with batteries right because we are accelerating our green transition that means we are going to have lots of batteries everywhere now with rooftop solar we are going to have batteries even at home everywhere batteries store energy energy dissipates so if you have excess energy you can actually if you imagine you can trade now the policies are open enough to actually give back to the grid actually also to create micro grids because now we are decentralizing energy right production and supply because it's very traditionally very centralized so this is happening right now 3000 transactions a day by the way it's not a, it's amazing videos are there you should go check it out and we are also doing honest yesterday thank you you learned for doing that so you did that honest as well but one thing i want to talk about uh is that we are also ch- supercharging with ai and extra foundation we have an, we have been working with uh, iit madras ai for bharat and ministry of it to launch something called four years ago we started this uh, effort finally launched last year as what's called bhashini mission but why is it important it's a dpi what does it mean it, it means it's a bunch of open source and infrastructure effort so that you can embed voice and indic language interface language is the biggest barrier that will f- either limit or empower next 500 million people to participate beyond watching youtube youtube watching no problem serial watching and all can happen but transaction impossible they will not transact so if you want your fisheries you know work you're doing reverse bidding on products and produce and farmers wanting to have direct access barrier is actually language because keyboard based bar- form form based mental model we have fill up a combo box and all nobody knows what the hell is all these things people like us can deal with it the first 200 million people can deal with it maybe stretch it to another couple of 100 million people after they just fall off the like cliff nobody can do we believe the next biggest india's ai wave is going to be voice based apps you will be able to actually speak to it and say ye invoice banao oh usko bejo like that i should be able to actually say it when i speak in my local language with dialect with code mixing that means we multi we mix multiple languages computer will be able to understand the high quality models these are all on github much of this voice models 22 languages voice models and data sets largest curated data sets actually open source on github that means if you want to embed voice into your app today you can actually do slightly costly because the inference inferencing cost is mm, we, nvidia tax unfortunately we have to keep paying but other than that but that will co- go it's very clear that in the next decade will be 1 million times less it will become 1 million times computing cost that's a prediction in the next 10 years the computing cost you should assume 
It's a temporary problem that we are facing. Okay, and we are also creating many. This year you will see voice-based payment. It's not voice-based payments. Interestingly, it's not about voice commands. It's about intelligent conversation with the payment app. And the driver in a paisa age kyoto. Angne parnya. Do you think you, they'll understand it? Who is my end driver? Who is who is me? Who is the driver? What does it mean by salary? How much salary? Computer will start understanding your persona, and you can actually train it to say that. Will it, that kind of payment will become so easy? It'll pop up and say, "Yeah, please confirm. This is the name. This is the account. I'm going to send it. Enter your pin and bond. Boom. No more form fill. That will be powerful way to bring the next 200, 300 million people. This year we launch it. By the way, it's called Hello UPI. It'll get done. And that is the real essence. That means India has done. I know it's taken a lo lot more time. Maybe I won't have much in time to converse with you. But policy, India is doing policy shift, building digital infrastructure. But these two are not at all enough. None, none of India's transformation would have happened just by policy or by building roads. Someone needs to drive on the road. and that's done by the market players like you innovators like you innovators are the only future hope we have in this country government asking government to solve anything is a wall okay the best government can do is to actually enable you and just just go out of the way and let the entrepreneurs do what they need to do right so policy impetus creating shared playground digital public infrastructure is a shared playground and that's because it is like physical infrastructure we believe dpi is no different from physical infrastructure if countries are building highways and railroads and airports for a reason libraries public libraries we built it in the society as a society we just stopped building something like that in the digital realm we just outsource everything to some big tech company he said oh we india is showing the world that there exist a notion of a digital public infrastructure that ought to create equity and common playground for even in the digital realm that's very very key okay that's what we are doing and that's why we believe zeroda for example nitin kamath zeroda's founder first 6 years nitin acquired 60000 customers in the first 6 years in the next one year they acquired 6 million customers because they went completely paperless and and sebi allowed the policy digital infrastructure allowed ap e sign aadhar e kyc upi and systematic investment was like this easy right and that's why we are now everybody has access to mutual funds is no more the days mutual funds are accessible to only the top 30 million or 30 uh, you know 20 crore kind of or even it was 2.2 crore in 2016 two crore people had ac capital market access <laughs> out of 90 crore people we have right so it's ridiculous and that's what is changing but in you need it. and that's what is driven dpi thinking is so i would i would actually sort of end with that and saying if you are a you are going to be entrepreneurs and builders and startups build build or fund products products ip intellectual property saas workflows reimagine the workflows that is not copy paste using voice completely different because the playground is really large for you to play and people have said including uber's dara dara was in he said if you can crack in india indians you know you'll crack anywhere in the world because our diversity and frugality that india needs for entrepreneurs you will work everywhere else right and if you are a strategic global leadership many of you are and you should definitely see this 50 country move 50 to 75 countries are going to be investing in dpi and building on top of dpi india's advantage of upi is going in many countries when you when dpi is go you can go along with that to provide services products uh, advisory everything else right so look for that opportunity and if you are an architect use this principles use the dpgs open source dpgs to embed and build it faster cheaper instead of building it from scratch and if you are just a passionate open source community member join 
joint effort to build the next one. We are all today already th building and you will see something coming up. We are already building, I was telling Avid about the tokenization thing. We are going to build something for the next years. We are actually going to bring out the white paper soon. We are constantly reimagining the possibilities. And you can join that as well. You can volunteer with us. So the real question is what will you do? Thank you.